Can you hear me now? <laughs> Is your mic on? I guess so. Take one. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Anything I mean, you want to be, darling. <laughs> bleep. <laughs> we have a big anchor. Because in this episode, we were. <laughs> do you ever feel like you can't talk? Mm-hmm. In this episode, our anchoring system has to be capable of withstanding wind, waves, storms, tides, currents, so that we can be secure and feel safe when we leave the boat or while we're asleep. <laughs> we're going to also share a brief history of the Texas City disaster of 1947. We are Diane and Craig, also known as Shorty and Pop. And this is our story about sailing into retirement. As a newly retired couple who loves travel, the ocean, and sand between our toes, we aren't ready to settle down just yet. So we replaced the typical rocking chairs with a sailboat. We, along with our stowaway Aussie, Pirate Ann Bonnie, live aboard our 45-foot Catalina Morgan sailboat sailing out of sight so that we can take our time exploring the oceans and the exotic locations it can take us to. My booty's too wide to get down in there. There's washers, and they're obviously stainless because they're not rusted. There's washers and nuts. Well, I would leave those in there, but look like you got it draining good. Yeah, but there's a couple of pieces of fiberglass floating around that. And where she's cleaning at, whoops is draining to right there. Wish that I could stay. Wish for this moment to never go away. But it's all in my mind. And though I know that there is nothing to find. Okay, Diane got the locker all cleaned out. Everything's ready for a rope. You got a new stainless steel clevis. So we're gonna... We can tighten that down in a second. Uh, so there's the anchor road. 190 feet is what I measured. Plus the 900. <laughs> so we're gonna run that rope back up and in, back out and then make sure it's straight so that when we coil it into the anchor locker that it doesn't, doesn't do the uh, crazy. All you can see Thinking about what your life came to be You're a beautiful sight In the summer night And you can't put up a fight in the misty light. Okay. That should be good. Put that on there. That where should I pin the thingy? The screw thingy. This way. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. But did you snug it up with your pliers or no? <laughs> Got to keep her supplied with tools. She's a worker. Yeah. Pretty tight. You're not gonna hurt anything. There you go. That's good. It's all it's doing is it's squeezing those two ends together so it's not hurting anything. That's good.
tape measure. Calipers. So today the weather's nice again. She even came out. Yep. <laughs> so what we're doing is we had marked the chain. We didn't do it very good. We marked the chain so that we know how much road we have out. And uh, you can see there we've pulled all the chain off the boat. We'd, when we originally marked the chain, when we put it on, we didn't do a very good job. It, it didn't work out well for us. So we're going to have to remark that. Uh, so we pulled the chain out, cleaned all the mud off that we gathered from off its bayou. Now we got to let it dry and we're going to remark it. But we're also going to change this bow roller out because when the when this anchor comes up, if it happens to get broadside where that flat hits this roller, then it's you can't get it to roll over and, and come all the way up. So for that reason, we're going to change this out, maybe to something with a V like this other one has. But uh, we're going to take some measurements to see if we can get something to fit it. You always have helicopters and airplanes come through here. So when I look at that, it's a four inch wide roller is the max it can be. So four inches. The other thing I wanted to measure was the uh, diameter of the pin. I've got it zeroed. Point six two inches is the diameter. So it's probably going to be like a half a half inch. Point six two. Can you remember that? Point six two. Okay. You could remember it's because your age. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as my age. We have got a gangplank for Bonnie, but we also use it. It makes it handy, especially when the boat. It's is more fun now that it has rollers on it. Yeah. Now you just need your little heels on like the lady and the mom and Captain Ron. I'm coming! <laughs> My butt doesn't look as good as hers. Everything. Oh, there was a sizing sleeve in there. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. How do you feel about a trip to West Marine? So we are headed to Kima, Texas to West Marine.
Here's Texas City. Texas City is the site of the worst industrial accident in U.S. history. It's not a pretty story, but it is part of U.S. history. The Texas City disaster was an industrial accident that occurred on April 16, 1947. It was the deadliest industrial accident in U.S. history and one of history's largest non-nuclear explosions. The explosion was triggered by a mid-morning fire on board the French-registered vessel SS Grand Camp docked at the port, which detonated her cargo of about 2,300 tons of ammonia nitrate. This started a chain reaction of fires and explosions aboard other ships and in the nearby oil storage facilities. Ultimately, 587 people lost their lives and another 3,500 were injured as the blast shattered windows from as far away as 25 miles. Large steel pieces were thrown more than a mile from the dock. We want to warn you, the following original video clip may be disturbing to some viewers. I would have to agree, a lot of it is very graphic. Texas City, a flaming torch. Towering pillars of smoke and fire envelop the Gulf Coast town in a three-day horror of explosion, flame, and gas that ranks it as the greatest North American disaster in 30 years. Blast after blast all but obliterates the city and turns the area into a sea of searing flame. Starting with the explosion of a nitrate-laden ship on the waterfront, the disaster quickly spreads to the huge $19 million Monsanto plant whose synthetic rubber chemicals add to the Holocaust, sending smoke billowing to 4,000 feet. On the second day of disaster, another nitrate ship towed into the harbor blows up, igniting fresh oil tanks and adding to the inferno that has long since been beyond control. So tremendous is the force of the explosion that a portion of the nitrate ship, shown here, is blown half a mile inland. In this tragedy of scorched earth, the grim search for the dead goes on. Red Cross officials fear the death toll will exceed the awful total of 700. Broken bodies are mute evidence of the explosion's fury as the smoking ruins yield their victims. Most were killed instantly by the paralyzing force of the blast, but others were so completely shattered that they may never be found in this forest of destruction. Ruthless force hurled this great barge onto land like a matchbox, and ever the heart-rending harvest goes on without interruption. Any available public building becomes an impromptu morgue. 150 embalmers toil to take care of the unending stream of victims. Most of the dead are industrial workers employed in one of the most highly concentrated small industrial areas in the country. Under the terrific pressure of catastrophe, Death is robbed of dignity as pathetic victims are stacked by the truckload for their final journey and rescue workers bend to their gruesome task. Said a war correspondent, not even the atom bomb in Nagasaki wreaked a more frightful fate on its victims. Relatives and friends besiege officials for word of missing loved ones as blast and flame continue to shatter the stunned town. Texas Governor Jester appeals for all possible aid. So let's find the 25 foot. Should be right here. Correct? Correct. Inside that box. Just put them in the lid over sideways and not. Okay, so we've been painting chain. So the orange indicates a hundred feet. 
There's more than 100 feet, obviously. The second 100 ends where the rope attaches to the chain, so we're not marking that because we'll know that that's to that 200 feet. Then the other markings we're going to have is white, which indicates 25 feet. So whether it's 25 or 75, it's a 25 foot distance from the last marking. So white indicates 25 feet. Then, at 50 feet, we will have blue. So, we should be good on whatever, whoo, the sun's bright, on whatever length we put out. It might be overkill, but at least it'll be easy for us to keep track of. What we'd done the first time was we put these little white marks every, I don't know, 20 feet, something like that. And it would come through, the chain would drop so fast we couldn't keep count. So we decided we'd better space them out, put them different colors, and of course make them larger. Got the chain all painted. It's ready to be loaded back into the boat. That's 200 feet of 5 8 inch chain. 85 pound mantis anchor. Should be able to hold us in a storm. Well, we were able to get this uh, bow roller that had a half inch diameter in it. I've got a 5 8 inch shaft. Was able to get it drilled out so it's rolling pretty good. I think it's going to work. So we'll stick it in and see. Better go get Diane or I'm going to drop something. First challenge is going to be not dropping my cheese in the water. Putting this on without dropping it. Since your fine motor skills are better than mine, let's see if we can drop the thing. I think you should use these. Okay. You got it. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready? There's another 25 foot mark. Perfect. Follow our adventures at Sailing Out of Sight on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.